Werewolf screamed in my face. Dear Scary Stories NYC. I have a story about a werewolf animal man that screamed in my face. This was back when I was a young woman and I was acting in a low budget movie. No, it wasn't a werewolf movie, but it was a horror movie set in the woods. I'm not going to name it because I have nothing nice to say about that movie or the director who made it. In those days, you did it the way you were told to or you got abused. There was no concern about microaggressions. There weren't even concerns about major aggressions. Hell, I saw this director slap a few of the cast and crew around, but nobody said anything. In those days, directors and producers were not only the bosses. They were considered artistes. And back then, art didn't suck like it does now, so art used to still matter. Even as little as I liked that director-producer, I still respected him, and that's been lost in the modern anti-American nonsense world of current year. But it was crazy in different ways back then, and all that should become apparent in this story. So I was not what they call the final girl, but I did have a number of scenes before I got killed by the stalker-slasher bad guy in this B-picture. Most of the interior shooting happened in the first week, and most of the second week I had to work out in the woods. Some were scenes where my character leaves a party and gets chased in the woods, but other characters are the ones that get killed. But eventually on my last two days they shot my death scene. Then they shot the special effects dummy of me dying. Then they shot a few more things with me to make sure they could match me with the rubber version of me later on in the editing. Now during this entire week, I was seeing a large creature that always seemed to run off when I turned my head to look at it. I now know what it was. It was a dogman. But I think I saw it four or five times, possibly, before I even understood what I was seeing. At first, it was just a black blur to me. Always just a bit too fast for me to look at it clearly. I've seen some ghost or shadow people videos recently that remind me of what I thought I was seeing. Because it was just so fast and it was so dark and indistinct and blurry due to the speed it ran at and also due to the way it kept to the shadows. I found it unnerving, but I figured it was just my nerves coupled with the strange shadows that you see when you're out in nature. I think it was the fourth day of the week when I had my first face-to-face -face meeting with the Shadow Man, who turned out to be much more than that. It had a canine appearance. It was three-dimensional. I mean, this was a werewolf or wolfman, or now I hear you on your channel saying dogman. This had to be that because it stood up on its tiptoes and it ran around like a dog, but on its hind legs. It had big, thick, muscular arms covered in fur, so it wasn't just a dog. It had a dog head, though. A monster version of a dog head, anyway. As big as the biggest bear, with long fangs each as thick as your big toe. It was as dangerous as a bear. Possibly more dangerous, because he seemed so much faster to react to things than a bear would be. I mean, bears are kind of sleepy, whereas this wolfman guy seemed to have had too much coffee, and he was jittery as all hell. So, there was a scene where I was told to go into the bushes and wait for my cue to enter. In the story, I was walking from the house party to the woods, but in actuality, I was walking from a scary, dark patch of the woods into the part that had lights and the camera in it. While waiting for my cue, I noticed the sounds of the crickets dying away. All the nature sounds stopped, and the only sounds left were the film crew preparing for my grand entrance. It was getting creepier and creepier standing in the dark woods. I felt like someone was watching me, and suddenly real life started to feel scarier than this stalker slasher flick that we were working on. My cue came and I did the shot, but something got mucked up somewhere, I forget the details, and we had to do a second take. This director was frugal, and he only did a second take if there was no way to use the first one. I asked if I could wait with the crew until things were set up, and the director lost his patience with me. So I went and stood in the dark rather than continue to be yelled at. But I was wondering if this was really the correct career choice for me. Spoiler, it wasn't. In fact, this was my next to last movie, but it was almost my last, because I wasn't alone in those dark woods. I felt like an idiot, wearing this low-cut short outfit with heels that made my feet hurt, and getting yelled at by a coked-up loser and made to stand in the woods in the mud in the dark. 
Usually when I got dressed up in those days, guys were at least civil to me. There's no business like show business. If you want your ego crushed, that is. So while I was feeling embarrassed and stupid, I started to notice that the woods were still awfully quiet that night. The crickets had still not come back. There were no other sounds either. I'm not a forest person, so I'm not even sure what I mean, but I know there should be night sounds, like owls or frogs or something. I'm not sure what. It was just so unnatural hearing my heart beating because the woods were so silent. And then, I knew there was someone behind me doing something, and I turned around, where I thought I saw someone moving. I don't know why I was curious who it was, but I took a step or two in that direction, certain that I had just seen someone moving over there, but unable to make out any movement any longer. When I turned around to walk back to my spot, however, there was the largest man I had ever seen, wearing some kind of a monster bear costume. I gasped and I fell back a step laughing at myself. They didn't warn me there was a monster in this scene, I said to the guy, who turned his head in that sideways way that dogs do when they're curious. I could see why they hired this guy. He acted just like a dog acts. I laughed at him and asked which of the makeup guys did his makeup because it was quite an impressive costume. In response, he made this nasty sort of low gurgling growl or grunt noise while he drooled from a dog mouth that had never been made by any special effects makeup guy. That meant this was a real monster, not a movie monster. And I screamed. My scream drew the assistant director and the continuity woman into the bushes, and the dogman ran away before they could see him. They spoke to me quickly, asking me what was wrong, but I was in too much of a state of shock to say anything at all. I wasn't sure how to even put what just happened into words, if you know what I mean. The next thing I knew, the director was yelling at me again, and I was crying. Then he was yelling at me because I was crying. I asked if the key grip could stand in the woods with me. He was the tallest guy on crew. That's the real reason I wanted him as my bodyguard. I mean, the guy himself was all into it, but the director said that the crew was needed on set, and that I had to grow up and start doing my job. I never even told anyone about the Wolfman. I was already being yelled at. Can you imagine the things that would have been shouted at me if I said I was screaming over a werewolf? Man, I was shaking all over and the director yelling at me that I was unprofessional for shaking all over, only made me shake more. All over. I think if I had my dogman experience at any other point in my life before or after that, I'd have taken some time to let it sink in that this really happened, and to sort of try to fit this creature's existence into my worldview. I was working on a low-budget horror movie in the later 20th century, though, and... That meant I was working 17 or 18 hour days sometimes. I didn't have to work as long or as hard as the crew, but I was still only getting a few hours of sleep per night. And I didn't have time to think about anything that was happening because there was always something else that needed to be done immediately. So I was back on set by 6 a.m. the next day, still not really having assimilated my monster sighting into my mind or consciousness. The next night we were in a different clearing in those same woods shooting someone else's death that my character narrowly avoided. There was another instance of me being asked to stand in the dark woods again, waiting for my cue. I begged for someone to stand in there with me, and I got shouted at again. I started to cry again, and the continuity girl talked the director into letting her stand in the woods with me. Once she did, though, this actor started messing up his lines, and she had to go back on set and get him back on script. So there I was, shivering in the darkness. Not so much because I was scared, but because the outfit they had me in didn't cover up too much. I was facing in toward the clearing, praying that my cue would come soon, and that we would nail it on the first take. To my left were thick bushes. To my right were, you guessed it, thick bushes. I was not really thinking about the dogman, about being afraid, or even about my lines. I was thinking about how good it would feel to go take a nap in the trailer I was sharing with the other actors. Then there was a loud rustling in the bushes to my right and a monster face emerged from the foliage. I don't even remember if I screamed this time, but I know I ran. It was probably more panic and shock than fear. He startled me when he burst on the scene like that. I ran before I think I even realized I'd been frightened. Now this was a dumb thing to do. I hadn't told anyone where I was going. 
I'm not sure I'd even screamed in fear this time to let them know that something had gone wrong. I was just running into darker and darker woods in short shorts and high heels, getting cuts all over myself from thorns and whatnot. I was so nearly delirious from lack of sleep that I remember thinking, Continuity is going to be mad at me for getting scratched up like this. I'm making extra work for the makeup guys. I came out into this sort of natural dead end of trees and boulders and I turned around to look for another way to go. But it was too late. Into the clearing walked the big monster dogman. It was shaped like a mix between a man and a bear. But it had canine legs and a dog or wolf like head. It was so muscular and thick all over. This was not a sickly bear with mange. This was not a skinny creature. This was a beefy monster of a monster and it was annoyed at me for making it run. The creature walked closer to me as I was backed up against the boulders with no place to go. It drooled uncontrollably, possibly because its fangs were too big and long for its mouth to even close correctly. The expression on its face was so angry and hateful that it reminded me of the director when he yelled at me. And then the wolfman did just that. He yelled at me. It was so loud, it was like there was no other sound in the world. It was so loud that I could see that shout, I could feel it. I shook and vibrated with it. And it smelled horrible. That was a bellow from deep in his belly. And I smelled everything rotting inside this beast. It was an odor of death and fear and rot. It was a smell of putrefaction. I not only began sweating and crying... I fell to my knees and threw up, like it was an offering to my new god. It felt like the creature's smelly roar had melted the bones inside me, and I was surprised I even still had knees to hold me up. I think the creature was ten feet tall, but I know that sounds crazy. He may have been only eight or nine because I was exhausted and very scared. It was too big to have been a man in a costume, no matter that's what I initially thought he was. When he ran, the ground shook, and yet, he had snuck up on me twice, silently. He was big as a horse, but agile as a rabbit, and quiet as a mouse when he wanted to be. And he had some kind of problem with me, personally. I'm an older person now, and I've tried all the different self-help books and theories in my day. I remember in the Four Agreements, it says to never take anything personally. Even if the other person means it personally, it's really their own head trip and doesn't actually have anything to do with you at all. Well, that may be so, but the dogman that I was dealing with that week meant whatever it was doing, personally. It had a problem with me, and I don't know what it was. I was just one person in an entire old-school 20th century film crew, with electricians, sound guys, and so forth, and the dogman seemed to be specifically unhappy with me. I'm not going to make it seem like I can explain why that is, either. I just know that's the way it was. If he bothered anyone else on crew, the stories never got back to me. I think something about me irked him. Maybe it was the smell of the makeup they put on me, I don't know. Maybe he thought my shoes were too loud. Even now, thinking back, I can't understand what was so different about me that would set off a big, cryptid, dog-ape creature. He came to me both times. He was angry both times. And I still don't know why. Because this happened decades ago, I feel like I can write calmly about it, but there was nothing calm about being chased by the dogman. I was physically ill. I knew I was about to die. I knew this was the end. Or at least it was like my body knew. Although maybe my soul was a bit in denial about it. I looked up into those eyes that hated me, and I wondered how long and painful this was going to be. Then the key gripped. The really tall guy I mentioned before. He came bursting through the foliage like Batman or something. He was out looking for me. He had come to save me. 
Now this key grip, he was and is a talented and tall, strong man, but I don't think he would have been a match for the dog man. That's why I'm glad the wolf man ran away on sight of this crew member bursting onto the scene. My knight in shining armor guided me back to the set, where I got yelled at for being all scratched up and ruining continuity. I had predicted that would happen, though. We got rushed back into shooting with only minor makeup touch-ups, however, because we were running out of time that night. I don't remember if it came out looking good or not, I haven't watched the movie for years. I can tell you that the key grip became my best boy. He and I stayed together and we eventually married, although not for over a decade after that. He left the film business and became a different kind of electrician, I guess you would say, although I'm not going to get into his personal details here. He's the only other one who saw the creature as far as I know. So this film, it was not shot in Michigan, even though this is a dogman story. If I were to tell you what state we shot in, since I've already told you it was a stalker slasher picture, you would be able to narrow it down to three movies, since there were only three knife-wielding maniac movies shot in this state back in the later years of the 20th century. I don't think the dogman is even supposed to live in this state. But I can assure you that at least one annoying member of the species did. Way back when. And that creature... Well, he screamed. Right in my face. is on the clock. Please welcome this episode's executive producer, Aaron Locke, who is a channel member. Aaron gets to see our secret uncensored members-only Dogman stories, and so can you, if you listen to the wise words of our international TV spokesmongrel, Henry Lee Dogman. Hank? Thanks, Biggie. And thanks to all of you for watching this far. If you liked it, please click like. If you'd like to see more of our work, please subscribe. And also click that bell icon if you'd like to be notified when we put out a new episode. To become an executive producer, you can donate to us through the thanks button under each of our videos or through our paypal.me slash peterbernard209 page. To receive cool perks like secret uncensored Dogman episodes far too wild to ever run on this channel, you can become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button or Join our PayPal subscribers club at peterbernard.com. Joining either at the $3 a month level or above gets you access to our over 25 hours of secret uncensored Dogman stories available nowhere else. Do you have a scary story about Dogman or some other kind of high strangeness that happened to you? Let us know by emailing us at scarystoriesnyc at gmail.com or by leaving us a voicemail message at 804 Lascari. 
you may need to call back on that when it cuts off after I think three minutes. And if you don't want to do any of that stuff, thank you for simply watching to the end. Good night, and have a scary tomorrow. Come back for more scary stories.